Hello, I'm Horang. In this video, I'm going to talk about IP addressing and subnetting. Here we're going to see what is an IP address, what is a subnet mask, what are different classes of an IP address, and what is a network address, how to do subnetting, and all this stuff. So let's get started and uh, see how everything works. First, what is an IP address? IP address is a unique address that every computer that wants to connect to the net needs to have. That address identifies that computer on the net. If I want to compare this uh, network with another network and give you a better example, I can compare this uh, with a telephone network. I'm sure all of you have got nowadays one uh, phone number and one uh, mobile phone. Uh, if you look at this uh, telephone network, you see that everyone has got everyone who wants to be part of this network has got one telephone number. This telephone number is a unique number, meaning you won't find two people in this world that have the same telephone number. At least some part of that number is unique and separate uh, these two numbers from each other. So when you dial one number uh, in this world or if you have one number, anyone who dials that number, you will answer that phone. The same concept is in computer network. If you want to be a part of its network or if you want to be on the net, you need to have this unique identifier. Now, if you look at the phone number, for example, the phone number can be something like this. Uh, let's say 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So this is an example of telephone number. So you see telephone number has a structure. For example, it has eight digits, it has seven digits, or something like that. Now, when you talk about IP address, IP address is also something similar to that. That is a unique address. A computer needs to have that address. And uh, it has a structure like phone number, but a bit different. I mean, more than a bit different, you will see that. IP address is a 32-bit address. Now, why we use bit here? Because, as you know, computer uses bit. A computer is, uh, works based on binary. We have just 0 and 1. And it works on bits. So here we have an address which is 32-bit address. So here just more, some more emphasis on what I said. IP address is a 32-bit address. IP address is a unique address. Now, what is the structure of an IP address? If you look at an IP address, uh, it can be something like this. I write 200.100.125.100. So, let me make this bigger so that it's, you can see that better. Okay, so this is an example of an IP address. This is the structure of an IP address. Now, since an IP address is 32 bits, how many addresses will we, will, will we get with these 32 bits? It's easy. As I told you, IP address uh, is in, uh, I'll talk about this later, it's in binary or decimal. Uh, I just wanted to uh, tell it now, but uh, it's too early to say that. So. Uh, just as I told you, IP address is 32 bits. And in bits, bits means we are working with binary, means we have either 0 or 1. So when you have either 0 or 1, you have uh, two values for every position, every bits that you have. Either you can put 0 or 2. And you have 32 of these values. So you'll get 2 to the power of 32 values meaning something around 4 billion addresses that you have. This is IP version 4 that I'm talking about. Now, let's look at the structure of the IP address that I told you. As I gave you an example here, uh, this is the structure of an IP address. Now, here I'm going to go in more detail on that structure. You see that here, here is an, another example, 128.11.3.31. You see I have three-digit number here. Then after that, uh, I can, I could have three digit, but I put 11, I put three, and I put 31 here. So this is how we write IP addresses. We separate every three digits with one dot. 
This is called this uh, dotted decimal format of IP address, meaning I wrote this in decimal. But you know your computer doesn't work with decimal; it works with binary. So when it works with binary, it means I have zero and one. But for us, it is very difficult if you want to tell everything in binary. For example, if I ask you what is your IP address, which one is easier for you to say? 128.11.3.31 or 100.0001001. You see that yeah, this is very difficult. I cannot remember this. So dotted decimal is easy to use for us. And you enter it in your computer when you want to assign it to the network card. But uh, your computer works with this binary version of that. So here is another example of that. Uh, I, I, example of IP address, yeah, I have 231.219.139.111. If I convert this to binary, I'll get these numbers, these values that you see here. Now here you've got three digits of address and uh, here you've got 8 bit for e every three digits. Now I told you we have 32 bit address and these 32 bit addresses are divided into four parts. Each part has got 8 bits or one byte. So the first part that I've got three digit this decimal number it's basically eight bits of ones and zeros. Second part, third part, and fourth part. Now, every part that I say is called one byte or eight bits or one octet. So you have first octet, second octet, third octet, and fourth octet. Now, these are uh, these are 8 bits in each position that just now I mentioned. Now, when I have 8 bits in each position, the least value that I can have here is 0. Meaning, if you want to put, let me again make this bigger. Uh, if I put 8 zeros, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. This is the least value that I can have here. If I convert it to decimal, it will be 0. The highest value that I can put here is 1. Meaning, if I put eight ones here, the value will be two five five. So here I've got zeros, the value in decimal will be zero. Here I've got eight ones in binary, the value in decimal will be two five five. What does this mean? It means for every uh, octet that I have here, the minimum value can be zero, and the maximum value can be two five five. So all in all, I'll get from 0 to 255 values, meaning 256 different values can be placed in each part. Now, these IP addresses that we have, we have divided these addresses into different classes. Now, why we have divided into different classes, I'll talk about this later. But what are the different classes of IP addresses that we are using? Basically, we have five different classes of addresses class a class b class c class d and class e uh, the classes that we use and they're common are class a b and c class d and e are not used uh, for assigning addresses to the computers class d is used for multicasting and class e is used for research and exper experimental purposes now uh, Class D, uh, if you study about routing and routing protocols, you'll see that how these uh, some of the addresses from uh, Class D come to the picture and some of the routing protocols use these multicasting addresses. But for now, we're going to stick to Class A, Class B, and Class C uh, addresses, and we're going to work on these addresses. Now, what is the difference between these different classes that we have? How can I find out what uh, when I when I'm given a class an IP address? How can I find out uh, this IP address belongs to which class? That's pretty easy. If the first octet of the class of uh, the IP address belongs to is between zero to 127, that is an address in class A. If the first octet is between 128 to 191, it is class B. 
if it's between 192 to 223, it is class C. 224 to 239 is class D, and 240 to 255 is class E. So uh, just one, one exception with, in class A that I, uh, I want to mention. Basically, as in some books, you might see that class A starts from 1 to 126. The reason is that uh, the addresses that start from 0 are reserved, and we use them for broadcast. And the addresses that are uh, that start from 127, you cannot assign them to any network. These addresses are reserved for loopback. Meaning, if I want to check, let me get my command prompt. Uh, meaning, if I want to check that uh, in my computer, in uh, my system, TCP IP protocol suite is correctly installed, I can ping 127. For example, that's zero, that's zero, that's one. If I get a reply from this, I know that this protocol suite is correctly installed. So this address is reserved for uh, loopback purposes or checking your TCP IP. You cannot assign this address to any network. For example, if uh, let me get my network and sharing connection. For example, I'm disconnected at the moment. Uh, let me go to one network and uh, properties here uh, if I want to assign this address to my network card the moment you type 127 you will receive an error Look, IP addresses starting with 127 are not valid because they are reserved for loopback addresses. So basically, you cannot assign these addresses to any network. That's why in some books, you'll see that class A starts from 1 to 126 because 127 cannot be assigned to any network. Now, here are some examples to see if we understood uh, how to find the class of an IP address. Here I've got five different addresses and we're going to find out what is the class of these addresses. We have 227.12.14.85, 193 something, 14, 252 and 134. Now I recommend that you pause this video, you uh, solve this problem, you find out the class of these addresses and continue with the answer. Okay, so let's see what is the uh, answer and uh, which class these addresses belong to. To find out the class of an IP address, as I told you, we have to look at the first octet of that address. Here, I have 227.12.14.87. The first octet is 227. So 227 is between 224 and 239. Uh, if you look at here, 224 to 239 its class D the next address 193.14.55.22 the first octet 193 is between 192 and 223 it means class C the next one 14.23.120.8 the first octet is between 0 to 127 that is class A 252.5.15.111. The first octet is between 240 to 255. So that is class E. And the net, the last one, 134.11.78.55. The first octet, 134, is between 128 and 191. So that is class B. So I hope you understood how to find out the class of an IP address.